the slide you just saw uh, was actually produced by Professor Marik from uh, the Eastern Virginia Medical School. Can you explain a bit the collaboration you are having with Professor Marik and others regarding the development of protocols for treating COVID-19? Uh, Professor Marik is uh, the, the person that I call a brother from another mother. Uh, Professor Marik and I, we have been working together in a variety of different uh, academic uh, things for probably 28 years or so. I've known of his work for many, many years, and you know he has some areas of particular interest that he has been doing. He's been doing a lot of uh, work on sepsis, which is you know overwhelming infections that people get. I've been doing some work in other areas, and together we have done many, 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 many studies, uh, papers, just name. Uh, Professor Marek, a few years back, approached me and asked me whether or not I was interested in, in talking about uh, a, a theory that he had, and that was that giving people uh, ascorbic acid, vitamin C, giving cortisone would make a difference in the outcome of patients that had these overwhelming infections. And, you know, we decided to start testing this uh, hypothesis, and we actually found that our patients that had infections, when they had se sepsis, and we gave them ascorbic acid, we gave them thiamine, which is another uh, vitamin, as well as cortisone-like agents, they were doing very well. Their mortality rates went down. I mean, they left the hospital early. So when the pandemic approached, the very first thing that we talked about was, hey, what would happen if we give this cocktail, quote unquote, to patients that have COVID? And that's how we started this idea of giving patients uh, what we now uh, have uh, called the MAD Plus protocol. As a sequence, maybe even before someone gets uh, the disease or any kind of symptoms, uh, the, the the protocol developed by uh, Professor Marik uh, makes suggestions regarding prophylaxis: um, uh, vitamin C, uh, quercetin, zinc, uh, D, melatonin. Uh, can can you can you explain the rationale of the prophylaxis protocol? Well, I guess, you know, when you, if you remember what your grandmother used to tell you if, when, when you, you know, you wanted to fight a cold was have vitamin C. I'm sure that, you know, we all had somebody give us a lot of vitamin C to prevent colds. Well, guess what? It works. And it works for a variety of different mechanisms. Uh, some of them uh, are directly related with the antioxidant properties that ascorbic acid has. However, this prophylaxis that we have actually recommended not only includes uh, uh, vitamin C, we also su suggest the use of zinc. We, use a, use, we suggest the use of melatonin. And it's not because we want you to sleep better, but because all of these medications actually decrease the inflammatory response that the virus is generating. Uh, we recommend that people use vitamin D. We actually have uh, uh, found that patients that get in trouble with COVID tend to have very low or non-existent vitamin D levels. When you compare people from, let's say, the south of the United States and the north of the United States, those people of the north of the United States, for example, the people in New York, they have a much higher mortality than the people in the south. Well, why? Because we have more sun here in the south of the United States. We have higher levels of vitamin D, so we recommend vitamin D. And more recently, you know, there's a, a lot of, uh, of uh, hype about the use of uh, famotidine. Famotidine is one of those medications that people were using for stomach ulcers and gastritis and stuff like that, that have also been found. All of them, they seem to, to do is they seem to contain that inflammatory response that, that you have at different levels, uh, molecularly speaking. Can you elaborate regarding zinc? Because zinc is, is very much talked about as kind of an essential complement uh, uh, especially with hydroxychloroquine at, at, at later stages? Yes, and I, I'll, I'll be glad to say that. I mean, all of these uh, reactions that you have in your body re require a, a variety of what we call cofactors. If you remember from your chemistry classes long time ago, they used to tell you, you know, in order to go from A to B, you need 
a little something that's going to give a boost to either an enzyme that, that catalyzes that reaction. Well, zinc is one of those. Zinc is a fascinating uh, cofactor that we can use to uh, accelerate some of the, the good reactions that the body needs.